Hello, how are you? Hi. Uh, Just like last year, I think you are the sharpest dressed man in the building. Excellent, yeah. Spe spe specifically in Phoenix style this time. Yeah, some yeah. Color matching everything. Yeah, yeah, hey, some yeah. color matching going on. <laughs> very nice, very nice. Um, Stein from, from uh, this is not rocket science. Yes. How are you? Um, great. I'm still alive after making the prototype work about 48 hours ago. We were very pictures proud of you hand soldering bits of this yeah. to get it ready, and that seems crazy. It's been a rush. It's, it's, uh, I mean, just to throw some figures at it, because it's an impressive bit of work. How many patch points? Uh, 330 patch points. How many knobs and controls? Uh, 110, I think. Wow. Yeah. So what's the what's the history of it? We see, of course. Your logo on there, this is not rocket science, yeah. but Phoenix as well. Yeah. Um, can you give us just a little bit of the history of it? Oh, definitely. Um, there's also Synthon on here. Uh, Synthon is an old Dutch synthesizer company that uh, existed late 70s, early 80s. Um, and then uh, for, for sad reasons, they went bankrupt. Uh, but the design team was still so much into synthesizer that they took their favorite designs and rose them from the ashes and created the Phoenix synthesizer. Okay. And then they did the same thing twice more in the Phoenix 2 and 3. Yeah. Um, and now, uh, we are helping them with our new keyboard synthesizer, and then partially in return, we uh, got the opportunity to make the fourth incarnation of this. Uh, yeah, we, we so this is the fourth Phoenix synth. Yeah, yes, this is Phoenix Four. This is uh, officially sanctified by the original design team. This is it. <laughs> Amazing. So there's way more than we can go through in a, a, a video, of course, 300 plus patch points. But can we just walk through the sections maybe and just get a little bit of sound as we do? Yeah, of course. Uh, where should we start? Uh, top left, oscillators. Top, top left, oscillator, yeah. Uh, top left, we have the, the yellow color code for all the uh, sound sources. There's external input. There's uh, the Phoenix oscillator, which is the classic analog oscillator that can be found in the Phoenix 2. There's the chord oscillator, which is a triple analog oscillator with digital pitch control for the second and third oscillator. So you can play major, minor chords and, and all kinds of other things. Uh, and then there's the digital oscillator, which is um, a collection of our favorite non-standard waveform oscillators, so no uh, sawtooth, pulse, and uh, a sine wave, but FM things, wavetables, uh, fa phase distortion type oscillators, and an external re resonator that takes input and you can play overtones on your incoming sounds. Um, we then move, I guess, top right, modulations, filters. Yeah, well, uh, the top right is the filters, dark blue is the filters. There's the ladder filter, which is taken from the Phoenix 2. There's the multiband filter, which is still in flux. It actually, the prototype burned down, so we decided to make something else out of it entirely. This is going to be the replacement of the formant filter on the Phoenix 2. The state variable filter is uh, uh, well, a classic state variable filter, but twist, and that it has high pass and low pass and band pass inputs instead of outputs, so you can sort of cross uh, kind of There was a Steiner filter that did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's comparable. It's uh, it, at least in function, but sounds slightly different. Okay. But yeah, uh, and low pass gate. Yeah, low pass gate is the standard component. Yep. Um, then we have the light blue effects section, so analog phaser. Um, then there's the wave multiplier, which is a very strange. Uh, you can almost make your own wave cycles with it, or you can crossfade between other, other wave cycles uh, to make very grungy sounds. There's the wave shaper, which is a wave folder and wave shaper in one block. Okay. Uh, and then there's a delay section, which we revamped a lot uh, into, into something more modern. Uh, it, it has a regular delay, of course, two of them. You can also play them one pole per octave track to make more carpless strong waveguide type things, or physical modeling things. Uh, reverb and chorus is going to be in there. Uh, still heavy under heavy development, so the next six months there will be some changes there. But it's that's mostly uh, that module. And then as we kind of go left again, we've yeah. got our modulation envelopes, yeah. LFOs. Yeah, there's uh, the orange section is the envelopes. There's the H A uh, A H D is R slash D envelope, which is um, delays, holds, uh, holds, and uh, a second decay. So you trigger two envelopes at the same time. So uh, for for a lot of classical sounds, you want sort of a decaying filter envelopes parallel to your regular ADSR, so that's yeah. a very uh, ni nice building block. And there's two really standard ADSRs because, well, you need them. Yeah, of, yeah, <laughs> yeah. of course. Um, then to the right we have the modulation section, which has the, the wobbler in a slightly uh, slimmed down version. Um, you have the triple LFO, which is uh, three phase shifted LFOs. So you can have nice uh, rhythmic output. Two classic stand, uh, LFOs with adjustable uh, slant of the, uh, from sawtooth to triangle to sawtooth the other way. There's a slew limiter, 
uh, then we have the, our noise section, which is uh, quite a big story, actually. We may even release that as a Eurorack module uh, later on. It has all the, the outputs, it has the white noise, pink noise, blue noise, red noise, purple noise. And then we have adjustable probabilistic, so you can have standard distribution noise, you can have beta distribution noise, you can have quantized noise, you can have binary noise, you can have all kinds of different things in time and space. So you can also change the rhythm, it produces the noise from completely regular to regular with some drift to completely chaotic and, um, and some extra tweaks that will come later. Uh, and then we have uh, a lot of gray utilities, uh, the mixer section of course, there's uh, octave selector, some offsets and comparators, uh, there's a CV gate interface with uh, USB MIDI on the back and clocking, um, a clocking system for polyrhythmic clocks. Uh, there's a sequencer, eight-step sequencer with, with a twist as well and that you can interconnect the ticks so you can have something happening on tick two and five and something else happening on tick one and seven if you want. Okay. Uh, there's quantizer, uh, so you can have the, the whole sequence quantized, or you can have your external input quantized, or you can sum your external input with the sequence and have that quantized. <laughs> okay, so you, everything and everything and everything. Yeah, everything and everything. And then there's a whole section of uh, CV mixers, precision mixers to do nice transposition with uh, attenuators on, every, uh, on everything and offsets and inverters. And then there's a block of five VCAs. Uh, there's a ring modulator hidden there. Uh, and then there's a, a very small output mixer with panning and extra CV per channel uh, with a headphone amp in there. And it uh, connects to the TRS jacks on the backside to connect to the rest of your studio. And then hidden in between, there's, the, there's a rectifier and there's a separate button you can press just to have a single button to press things and an OR guide. And that's roughly it. That's a rough uh, overview. I mean, it seems like this is potentially too early to have an answer, but are you aiming for a price or a release date yet? Uh, we are aiming for 5,000 euros and we are aiming for six months from now. Okay. It's, it's going to be a wild ride. So. Okay. Well, let's hear something. I mean, we, there's, we, there's no way we can patch all of this. <laughs> there's only another day and a bit left of Superbooth. There's only so many patch cables. I know, it's only taking, <laughs> yeah, we're going to run out of cables. But let's hear some sounds.